Retford Park. It's been a landmark in the southern highlands of New South Wales in Bowral for more than 130 years. This place has a long history, but also has its sights set firmly on a sustainable future. One of Rick's big achievements has been to transform Retford Park into a completely organic garden. Thanks for turning the heater on. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah, look, that, that's, that's great. How did you actually go about turning this place organic? Well, when I got here, a lot of this material that we're looking at here would have gone to the burn pile. And I just thought, wow, what a waste. But a bit of trial and error, we've worked out a system. Some goes to chipping, some goes to compost, some goes to the chooks. Some is used directly on the garden as, as mulch. The main thing we did was stop using chemicals. So in the shed, there was a huge stockpile of chemicals. So luckily the council had a program where they, you could take chemicals for disposal. We don't use any fertilizers either, only our compost that we make and some blood and bone. And you can see the garden, it, it looked pretty good without the use of chemicals. Rick has lots of great tips for gardening organically. And although here he's doing it on a big scale, his ideas will work just as well in smaller spaces. So weed control is a big part of our work here at Redford Park. I can imagine. So how do you go about it in different areas? What strategies have you got? Well, we've got the lawns, we've got the gardens, we've got the gravel paths. They all have a different approach. The lawns, for example, the ones near the house we focus on, the park not so much. So say this flatweed, for example, it's a matter of just digging down with the trowel a couple of times around it. It's got a big taproot, so you've got to try yeah. and sever that. Pop. Yeah, that's oh, it. Yeah. I love it. Very satisfying. So peaceful. I, I could just sit here and do it for, for ages. You could, but actually I've got something better for you to do. Come and have a look. A little bit less peaceful. Less peaceful. peaceful. Well, I'm intrigued now. <laughs> <laughs> So this is your flame weeder. I've used them before, but they've been gas, and it's a slightly different system. This kerosene one, tell me about it. Well, they're, they're really good, really, really efficient machines. So we've got a, a pump here to pump up the pressure, so the kerosene becomes vaporised and surges out the front here, creates a really hot blue flame. That means we get no blackening, and they're really effective for use on these gravel paths. So consume the whole weed, so you can get a nice clean looking path without using any herbicides. So even organic herbicides, they leave a dead weed, because this just cleans it all up, and it consumes the weed seeds as well. When you're done with your weeding, do you want to come back and weed again next week? Probably not. So that's why I use mulch, which is what we've done here. So this is a lovely leaf mulch I've used in this bed near the house. So this material is picked up by the mower from all our deciduous trees. And look at that, that beautiful thick mulch. All those benefits, it's insulating the soil, it's keeping the weeds down, it's feeding the soil as it breaks down, it's providing habitat, little creatures that are living, living in there. The, the fungi and the bacteria in the soil are all happy. But what I like to do is each part of the garden has its own customised look. I call it customised mulch. So we'll use bark chips somewhere else, we'll use branches somewhere else, we'll use self-mulching like pine needles under the pines. So each area of the garden has its own distinctive signature. And what we've got here is my tree necklaces, I call it. I decided I wanted to have more branches under the trees for biodiversity, because there's a lot of habitat and opportunity here for fungi and insects, and then the birds eat the insects. So we started throwing a lot of our branches, our prunings under the trees or any that had fallen. But my manager here said, look, it's a National Trust property. We don't want branches everywhere, it looks untidy. So I'm trying to find this balance between achieving my biodiversity goals and making the place look look good. And so I came up with this idea of the circles. So now we collect the branches when we're pruning and we collect ones with a bit of a curve and we just, just arrange them and we kind of weave them in and out and this is the result. I love it. I yeah. really love it. I've been enjoying doing it too. So I was talking about pest control and rhododendrons are a good example. When I first came here, they were covered in two-spotted mite. Makes that horrible a spidery look that, yeah. you know, it's really unsightly. So what we did is we bought predatory mites and the predatory mites, you sprinkle them on and they go underneath the leaf and eat the two-spotted mite. So what we do is put it on about three times a year during the, the warmer months. And there's little ecosystem develops where the predatory mites are eating the two-spotted mite 
And seriously, look at the rated engines. Like, they yeah. they never look better. Yeah. So it, it, it really is a, a process of, of patience and application. That's right. The first thing I always think about pest control is don't panic, because nothing's going to die overnight, you know. So you can really just wait for finding a solution or finding nature to, to, to help you out. Rick's hard work here at Redford Park shows that an organic approach can have big results on a big scale. But he's only just getting started. What do you see for the future? Well, Barrel has a fantastic climate, mild climate. We've got really good soils. We've got this incredible heritage at Redford Park, the beautiful gardens. And I would like to see the gardens become the best gardens in Australia. Now that's a goal. Yep. I like it. Thanks so much for having us. It's been an absolute pleasure.